Hey everyone and welcome to another Planet Zoo tutorial. Today we are going to talk about decals and first of all uh, decals are a part of the Europe DLC. So uh, if you guys want to do what we are going to do today you will actually require the Europe DLC. This is a bit of a disclaimer at the beginning. I really do hope that they are going to integrate more of the decals in the future also for the base game version. Before we start turning this build into a more or less weather build and uh, along the road of doing that I'm going to talk a little bit about what the decals can do for you what you can achieve with them and uh, just in general but before we do so let's have a little look at all the decals available now you can see these are all the decals available and in order to give you a bit of a better idea what decals are so um, you know typical photo and texture files you have JPEG TIFF or yeah, actually PNG and um, the advantage of a PNG file is that it does have an alpha layer in which you have certain areas of the image cut out. It's basically the image that uh, Google is fooling you around with when you always see these little squares like the gray tint square, uh, squares in the background whenever you think there's a transparency and there isn't. Yeah, that's that's the PNG. And basically that's what a decal is. It is a overlay for a texture that is basically coming with an alpha layer. As you can see all over here, this is um, a big old concrete wall and I slapped a lot of these decals on top of it. So if we go in here, you can see that in the menu, you can see I can click or like on the wall, I can click these things and can see uh, via the outline that the decal is basically only this piece and the cool bit about this is it has a cool little depth texture to it and it almost looks like as if the wall is cracked. Now these decals come in different variations and we have, I'm just gonna show it to you right now like this, we have some corner pieces, I just have one so you have a look at what that is, so one brick texture here for the wall and then we've a couple of bridge, um, brick kind of decals in here and you can see the form of these are always the same you can see by the form here that these five things are most likely the same and then we have three different variants for the more or less clean brick version i'm not really sure why we don't have anything like that for others but we do have these ones over here as we can clearly just highlight and then also if we go further into it you can see there is some you know weathering style over here this is these are kind of cool though you can make them disappear in the wall but i'm going to talk about the texture and uh function in a second i just want to go quickly through it all we've got the same for concrete we've got the same for painted brick we've got the same for these kind of cobble um more rural rustic stone wall so these are the four sets if you will the normal brick the uh, normal concrete the painted brick and the more kind of rustic stuff and then we also have a set of moss pieces which is fully flexi color which is kind of cool you can see I've, I've just chosen to make one of those a bit more less greenish and it also just moves a little bit so if, if you look closely there is a little animation going on I think it is maybe it's a texture itself or it is because it should be moss I don't know but it just moves a little bit and then we have a whole range of these cracks and I love this because we've got so many different one of these um, you can have a very nice variation of different cracks and these cracks do work basically together with all of these sets and then we've got a couple of these kind of grunge things um, which make your walls and stuff all look a bit more weathered so I'm a big fan of the overall flexibility of the stuff and I'm also a big fan of the choice of these things but yeah as you can tell um, these are the ones we have available and now it is very important to speak about how we are going to utilize them now, back with our building, we are going to go into build mode. Um, and if we are going to use decals, there are a couple of things you have to keep in mind. First things first is material. So keep in mind, whatever you use over here, what could technically, like realistically, be the underlying um, layer of something. So would you go and have, let's say, a kind of brick like here, would that make sense? Well, pretty much not, because you've got some wooden planks on top of something and they would break in a different manner than what you can see over here. So that would never actually look realistic because that's just, your brain can't connect this, right? Because that's just not how it would be in real life. However, if you just drop that all the way down here, obviously that makes a whole bunch more sense. Um, the same goes for the coloring. So coloring is very important because you obviously wouldn't have something like here and then these things would be all of a sudden this kind of whatever orange tone this might be a lot more 
you know, usable in, for example, uh, African areas when they use clay or clay stones. If you want to have that like rustic stone is kind of clay, then that makes a lot of sense. And then the last bit I want to quickly talk about, and these are like the main three rules I would follow to make things look good, um, is always keep in mind where stuff would happen. So for example, we are going to start now with the weathered stuff, okay? So weathering most likely starts in seams or there where you have a lot of, let's say, um, humidity and stuff or where technically water would drop down or actually the side of the house or the building that is always in the wind. This is where the weathering would happen. You would not like start somewhere in the middle here because that just makes no sense you would work your way from the side so we are going to start here from the side and um, I'd actually recommend to just go in here and now we have to find the coloring because it does have to fit right with the planks because you don't want to have it that prominent that looks just kind of weird um, so we go down in here and then now what's very important is to oh wait this is the this is the wrong one we're gonna go here uh, this is the the underlying color and this is what you want to mix and match with your your wood color so you can just go in and just look for the one that you find the most fitting one I think this is pretty neat and then you can click it down you can see it just like the detail is very subtle you know it's very subtle if we click that again um, I want to do one thing though and just go into the building and just copy that color real quick um, sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't it's uh, it is a little bit dependent on how the texturing actually works and actually you know what i think i want to have these in the building it makes our life a little bit more easy um, so just go in here and then we are going to make this fit like that there you go it's even better and now we can start and um you know this is oh wait is this the concrete wall i'm just going to put that in both uh, okay, see this is this is basically not really better than it was before So sometimes it's not really necessary to copy the color because the way the color works is a bit different So I'm gonna go with this and now you can use this piece or use other pieces But I find this one is a very good one um, when it comes to corners and stuff So I'm going to just use that somewhere down here, but I'm being very careful with it You know, I'm not going to overdo it um, I'm just going to use it maybe three times have like a very much a different one here on the other side if we consider this is going to be the windy side we're just going to put that like somewhere uh, here and I made the mistake to now use the uh, this to move tool I would recommend to not use the advanced move tool because then you um, are very much likely to unfortunately move it in too too much in or too much out so that's a bit of a shame but yeah so very important is um, always uh, press V in order to make the align to surface work and then you just you know use your way through here and then yeah don't do what I just did uh, make sure that you vary the rotations here and there and then just like be very careful to where you want to have it i think down here below the windows makes sense because again there is also where the water would be and then you can just you know search your way through here and just use a couple of these things and again make sure to not overdo it we have like a very nice thin one which makes sense we have a seam here in the middle this is where the two planks connect so there you go you can actually use that to make these planks connect a little bit more nicer and then see this is already how it starts to look a bit better you can obviously also go in and use this on stuff like that if it's uh, thin enough which it isn't so you can't use it over here unfortunately we have to use something else uh, uh, fortunately enough we do have some smaller cracks we can use um, so if you want to make some bricks and stuff like that also use uh, textures always make sure to uh, you know go in and try to use these things as well um, and then the same trick applies just put it down and make sure to search for a color that matches your color very much as best as you can I'm just going to try and find the color that matches I think that's pretty fine then we've got to have a scratch right here on the side you can see one one is cool if we do more or not this is really down to you guys if you if you think you want but there are unfortunately not that many pieces um, that you could could use here anyways because they're like pretty big indeed so yeah let's let's see if we can find anything else that works over here no this is even too tiny what about the moss also too big yeah some of the pieces just don't work unfortunately because they're too big um, but you can still just use the same one again somewhere over here yeah, there you go. I have like two of them. That's fine. 
And then you can walk your way through this like so. I want to also have something here on the side because I feel like this is also where we need something. Um, this is obviously too big. Um, this is also too big. Let's see if we can, yeah, this is the smaller one. And this is, as you can see, way too prominent. So I wanna have it only down here, I guess. Um, and now we have to adjust the color a little bit more. So this is going to be interesting. So this is a bit more bright and we, we're gonna have to find the color that matches the uh, the pillar the most I think that's fine and then we can see if it makes sense to also have here a bit more bright color and I think that's kind of neat there you go look at that that looks cool and then we also put something else down here on this side and I think this is also fine if we have that a little bit more lower and this is basically how you you know search your way through here um very important is that you also sometimes have some highlights in you know this is something you really don't notice from the beginning but we are going to have something now as a highlight and i think you know um as this is going to be maybe like being a more older building we can do something else with this and then we're done. I made a little cut here to just jump forward because, you know, essentially the ideas I gave you are all the same. And this is the finished result, uh, although just from the front and also a little bit uh, overexposed, a little bit overdone. So you can see the difference a bit more clearer. I would go and do a little bit less, especially on the roof. But um, yeah, just to go you uh, show you through here a little bit. Now, what I did, as you can see, I did a bit of uh, change here on the ground, put some cracks in, but also a bit of dirt uh, all over here. This is all the same or with the weathered effect and then uh, using the background color as close as possible to the underlaying texture of whatever piece you're using even put something here on the tables as you can see it almost looks like as if this is like you know uh, merging with the texture a bit more used and stuff because all these tables wouldn't be new you've got some cracks in here um, as if the plastic you know from the heat in the summer has just like popped a little bit and then the same over here again just like being dirty and um, I think you know um, in direct comparison it looks pretty much overdone but I think if you would put this now in a forest put some things here and there you know a bit of shrubbery around bit of stuff here and there you know put a put a couple of boxes and stuff down because it's you know pretty bare bone right now make a couple more details and then the building looks so much more like with a character because you could just like copy this building now and essentially go back to the old building do a completely different uh, type of uh, decaling for example you know i chose for example these rocks being the stuff that is underlying but you could go and say no you know what that's like brick below there and not like these boulders or whatnot so um you gotta put some bricks down here and the same goes here with the you change the color of uh, the the wood over here on top and you know this kind of stuff would always change it you could also say this is cobble down here and then put these things down below cobble as if they have put some concrete on top of cobble because you know it has been concrete in the past and then they decided to do concrete because it's more easy you know these kind of things you can always do you could always go a bit more crazy if you want but i think um if you you know stick to certain rules like stick it uh, to the seams make sure it put it always down there where it realistically would be you can see i put some darker um weathered stuff down here because a couple of uh, water and humidity and whatever could just you know um collect down here and then we also have all the cracks here from um the overlaying texture around the edges as well and then just a little bit from the bar uh, from the ground nothing is like really in the middle except on this very open front over here here. and this is what you do see quite often because that might not be like the most uh, important wall of the entire building because that's like the little pre uh, pre room or whatnot so they don't really spend too much um, effort on keeping that clean you can see this is a, like a very um, weathered uh, front because that's also essentially in the front of the rain and stuff so I decided to make that a little bit more um, completely redone and you can see how much of a difference it makes and just imagine you would have needed to do this kind of you know detailing with existing pieces it basically it would be impossible you could use like I you know maybe Ricey could have done that um, with her skill of making these insane uh, paintings and stuff uh, she could have maybe even done this but then I don't know how many millions of pieces would be used to that so you would have technically in your entire zoo one wall that is nice looking and the rest is basically just flat as it is and uh, yeah so this is the finished result um, I hope it was helpful for you to see the process of doing that a little bit um, also I just mixed some of 
of these tiny tiny boulders in here the little four rocks um, I always recommend doing so as well uh, because whenever there is something uh, broken there comes something else with it so have some stuff lying on the ground as well you could also put if you want um, a bit more grass and stuff in here make sure that it's weathered you can take some of the moss and mix it in between so there are like countless possibilities but make sure to use decals and be also brave in using them because this makes your building look so much more uh, realistic and gives it the character that it's needed again this is maybe a bit more too crazily done but i just wanted to show it to you so otherwise you wouldn't have seen the dif difference i guess um but yeah so this is it i really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and if you want more tutorials and there's something uh, you have no idea how to do put in the comments down below what you think so thank you so much for watching i see you in the next one have a good time and goodbye